Welcome. This video is part of a course on Subriemannian geometry. In the, in the previous videos, we defined Carnot Karateodori spaces and we proved Chao Rachevsky's theorem, which says that, uh, that the Carnot Karateodori distance is finite. Now we discuss the length structure defined by, by the distance function. We will prove that the only curves with finite length are indeed the admissible curves. And for these curves, these admissible curves, the two length structures coincide. Next, we will discuss when these length spaces are geodesic spaces. We now discuss the length structure for Carnot Carateodri spaces. Okay, so let's remember what are the objects that we are considering. So M delta norm is a sub Finsler manifold. This means that M is a connected manifold. Uh, the norm is a continuously varying norm. And these two data together is what we in this course were called Finsler manifold. And then delta instead is a is a sub bundle of the tangent bundle that is bracket generating. Bracket generating a tangent sub bundle. And remember that, uh, that we proved the Chaurachevsky theorem that tells us that since delta is bracket generating, then you can connect at any two points with a delta horizontal curve, um, namely a curve that is tangent to delta. I will just write delta horizontally connectivity. Okay. And, um, and what we can consider then is the sub Finsler distance. Which is defined as DCC between two points P and Q. This by definition is the infimum of the length defined as the integral with respect to the norm of the tangent vector of all those curves that are absolutely continuous from P to Q and are horizontally, delta horizontal. So then the derivative is in delta almost everywhere. Okay. And what we have proved in the previous video is that TCC really uh, is a finite value and gives the manifold topology. Okay. Very good. So now we have a distance. So it's 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 very clear that this uh, defines the uh, it's the triangle inequality. Okay, maybe uh, of course it's uh, symmetric. Um, now, okay, uh, maybe one should also observe that if two points are different, then the the distance is strictly greater than zero, and this is because um, the only curves of zero length are um, are uh, the constant curves and and of course okay we we don't know yet that this infimum is realized but what's happening is that um, this distance is always greater than the uh, fins finsler distance and we know that finsler distance they uh, give distance zero only two points are the same okay but now now that we have this distance we also have a length structure induced okay and, and it's, it's very natural to ask what is the length structure induced by DCC. 
Okay, what we expect is, is the length, is the same length structure given by the sub Finsler uh, structure. So here's the theorem. So suppose we have a sub Finsler manifold. And we have a curve, gamma, from an interval a, b to m curve. Then, so first thing, if the length with respect to the CC distance is finite, then gamma is delta horizontal. When it is parameterized by arc length. And second part, if gamma is delta horizontal, then the, uh, the CC length is finite and it's equal to the Finsler length of gamma. And from here, we will also have that and gamma is, gamma is parameterized parameterized by arc length if and only if the, the derivative of gamma is almost everywhere equal to one. Hmm? And yet, see, parameterized by arc length really does not, it's not really important which length we take because we, we said it is, it is the same, okay? Um, and and remember that um, in 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 any uh, metric space, every curve of finite length might be reparameterized uh, to be uh, parameterized by arc length. And um, and moreover, uh, something to observe is that in in the definition of our, of delta horizontal, we ask that the curve is absolutely continuous plus the derivative is almost everywhere inside the bundle, subbundle delta. Being absolutely continuous is not invariant under reparameterization. This is because not all homeomorphisms between intervals are absolutely continuous. They are differentiable almost everywhere, but the homeomorphism may not be the integral of its derivative. Is the output and the input one is equal to one almost everywhere. Okay, let's prove this theorem. Now. Proof. Okay, so remember that as soon as we have a, a, a sub Finsler manifold, in particular, we also have a Finsler distance. So Finsler distance associated to uh, M and just the norm. Okay, when we take all this, all the sub -band, the tangent bands. Okay, so what do we have? So when you define the Finsler distance, you take all possible absolutely continuous, not only the the um, uh, horizontal ones. Therefore, the distance is less or equal than the CC distance. Okay. And therefore, the length with respect to the Finsler distance is less or equal than the length with respect to the CC distance, okay? We will use a few times this observation, okay? So let's start proving the first part. So we have a curve um, uh, whose, whose length is finite, okay? So this, uh, this is the first part, the length respect to TCC, CC is fine. Okay, we assume that gamma is parameterized by arc length. Remember that every curve that has finite length can be reparameterized by arc length. All right, so now that we have that the curve is finite length and parameterized by arc length, then we observe that if you take the Finsler distance between gamma s and gamma t, then this is less or equal than the CC distance between gamma s and gamma t, which is 
uh, s minus t hmm? because the gamma is parameterized by arc length. Okay, so therefore gamma is a one Lipschitz curve. We can apply Rademacher. And we get that gamma is absolutely continuous. Okay. Now we have to prove that almost everywhere this derivative is in, in, inside the sub bundle. Okay, so now we take t0, a point of differentiability. for gamma. We have to prove that um, the derivative at this point is inside the sub-bundle at that point. Okay, suppose not. Okay, let's put ourselves in coordinates. Coordinates. So uh, some simplification say t zero say it's zero of, of the real line gamma t zero is zero in in R n and the subbundle let's say it's uh, is the first k variable uh, k coordinates zero n minus k inside our n. Hmm? Okay. And let's say the derivative is not in this subbundle and up to a change of variable, we can assume that this is the last basis of the standard basis, standard vector of the standard basis. Okay? Zero, zero, one. Hmm? Up to changing uh, coordinates, we can assume that this, this, this is the situation. Okay? We want to reach a contradiction. Mm. So now, okay, let's use the derivative as this property. So for t small, we have that, uh, that gamma t minus the derivative times t. This is less. So this goes to 0 divided by t. So we can assume that it's less than 1 half of t. Okay? So look at the the nth component, gamma n of gamma, uh, and this becomes, mm, so becomes uh, gamma n t minus t less than one half t, okay? And now I, I will write t minus, uh, gamma n of t less than one half t. Okay, I move gamma n on the other side and I get that gamma n of t is greater than one half t. Okay, so let's remember that we have this bound. Okay, so in particular, gamma is also non, is not zero. Hmm? Right, okay. Now let's use the continuity of the norm and the distribution. So since delta and the norm are continuous, then for all epsilon, there exist R, R of epsilon, uh, greater than zero, such that for all points in the, let's take the Finster ball radius two R, we have that whenever we have a vector, let's write a vector in coordinates. So it's a i d i i from one to n. It's in the distribution at a at a point p, same point p here, and has norm one. Or less than one, then this is not so different from the points at when p is equal to zero. When p is equal to zero, we said that there is no nth component. Hmm? So what we can say is that the nth component, which is exactly a n, then in norm 
is less than epsilon. Okay, this comes from the continuity. All right. So now let's fix this R. So we have epsilon fixed, R fixed. So now take sigma, a delta horizontal curve that almost realize um, the distance DCC between gamma of zero and gamma of R. And we may assume that sigma is parameterized with unit speed. Namely, the, the, the norm of, of sigma dot is equal to one. Hmm? So um, if we call B or B epsilon, the length, the Pinsler length of sigma, so sigma goes from zero B to uh, M is from, from gamma zero to gamma of R. Uh, we have the property. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, we should almost realize the distance. So such that, okay. Um, so we have B epsilon, which was the length of sigma, which up to factor of two, this is the distance, so this is the distance between gamma zero and gamma of R, okay? So notice that this is a non-zero number, right? So this, this is not, it's not zero, right? Because of this property here, right? So this is non-zero, so tw twice this number is greater, and therefore, I can take a sigma that is smaller than this distance. Okay, and now, so gamma was also parameterized by arc length, so this is less than two r. Okay. So from this um, from this bound, we understand two things. So we understand first. Okay. Uh, I will just re rewrite this inequality saying that B epsilon over R epsilon, so this was an R of epsilon, this is less than one half, okay? So let's keep this in mind because we will get a contradiction to this fact. Second, um, this, so the Finsler length of sigma is controlled by two R which means that image of sigma, since six, six sigma starts from zero, is inside this ball here, okay? So we have that image of sigma is inside the ball zero to R, which means that in, at the points of sigma, we will have this bound hmm, for the derivative at sigma, right? In particular, since the derivative of sigma is uh, one, so we can take x to be equal to sigma, and we get a bound on the last component of this tangent vector. So we have that the norm, so the absolute value, sigma dot n, this is less than epsilon, okay? So this bound comes from this bound. Very good, okay? so. Let's, let's now get uh, an implication from this bound here. So what we have is that, okay, let's start. Um, we start, so we have, uh, okay, we're talking about positive numbers. So I have R epsilon over two. This is less than gamma N of R. Uh, where is this? bound coming from, um, from here, okay? Gamma of t is at least one half t, okay? And we have this bound. Now, gamma of r, so this was the final point of sigma. So 
so the nth component should be the same. Okay, this is not in B, in R is in B, B of epsilon, okay? Um, and now we are in, we are in coordinates. So the, this, this, this number can be calculated as the integral from zero to P epsilon of the derivative, since this is also a curve starting from the origin, okay? Now I will bound it putting the absolute values inside. And now this is always less than epsilon. This is what we wrote here. And therefore this integral is less than B epsilon times epsilon. Mm -hmm. So what, what does this mean? This means that if I take B epsilon over R epsilon, this is at least one over two epsilon, and yeah, and this goes to infinity. It's a contradiction with b over r less than one half. So, to conclude, we prove that if the CC distance of gamma is finite then gamma is delta horizontal. So, and we prove the first part of the, uh, of the theorem. Let's prove the vice versa. So, second part, vice versa. So if gamma now is delta horizontal, we have to prove that it has finite length. So then, so the first inequality is very easy. So L D C C of gamma, then this is uh, at least the uh, Finsler length of gamma. And we proved, proved already that for Finsler length, the, for Finsler structures, the induced length by, this, the, by the distance is exactly the Finsler length. So this inequality is okay. Hmm? Two, the other inequality, so CC distance. Okay, this is by definition, this is the supremum of all partitions of the, of the domain of the sum of the distance of consecutive points. So say from I from one to K gamma ti yes. now by definition each of these distance is the infimum of uh, of the finsler length of horizontal curves but now gamma is a horizontal curve so it's a competitor and therefore this supremum is less than the sum of the cc distances oh, oh sorry of the of the physical length of gamma restricted by on the interval ti minus one ti. Now the physical length, actually both lengths are additive. So this is exactly equal to the physical length of gamma. And therefore we've proved the theorem. The only I mean, the, the, the curves of finite length are exactly the um, horizontal curves. Okay. Now, as a coral, corollary of this, we can just express this fact as saying, okay, CC spaces are length spaces. Okay, so this is ex extremely clear, but let me still stress it. Okay, so remember, the the Carnot Carateodri distance is the infimum of the Finsler length of gamma, where gamma is a delta horizontal curve from P to Q. Now that we know that the length for delta horizontal curve is exactly the CC distance, we can write as the infimum of CC distance of gamma such that 
gamma is just a curve from P to Q, right? So one could, right, if I put uh, the, the CC distance of gamma is finite, right? then this means that this, this property is exactly the same of saying delta is horizontal. The gamma is delta horizontal, right? This is what we proved. These two conditions are the same, right? And for those curves, these two quantities are the same, okay? But of course, like when I take this infimum, I can just remove this because they don't count. So just, hmm? And now this condition is exactly the condition of being a length space. Okay. Next, the obvious question is when is this infimum realized? Okay. In general, it's not realized. For example, if you take the plane and just remove a point, hmm, then it's complement of this point is a length space. So I'm considering the Euclidean distance. This is a length space, but the infimum is not realized because points that are um, the, uh, opposite from, from the point that are removed, uh, they have shorter and shorter curves, but the, the shortest curve is not in the space. Okay? So one needs some assumption. Okay. So let's discuss this. Okay. okay. So when is the minimum realized or the infimum, sorry, infimum realized, infimum realized as a minimum, hmm? equivalent to when are CC spaces geodesic spaces? Okay, um, one characterization that is a particular case of something that is true for uh, general uh, length spaces is a theorem due to Hopf-Reno. Okay. Let's call it Hopf-Reno for, for CC spaces. Okay, so suppose we have a Carnot Karateori space, so, uh, namely a sub Finsler manifold equipped with a Carnot Karateori distance. Then, so the first thing I want to tell you is that uh, for all point P in M, there exists an open set containing P such that for all other point in this neighborhood, there exists a length minimizing curve. from P to Q. So in other words, if I take a point P, there is some neighborhood of the point such that any other point is can be connected with a shortest curve. Okay. Okay. So this is the first thing I want to prove. Uh, so locally, they are geodesic spaces. What about globally? Globally, um, and okay, now why, why this is true? This is true because um, uh, locally M is a uh, is a M is a locally compact space because the topology is the same with the one of the manifold. Okay, so small ball, small enough balls are compact, and therefore for that we prove that for locally compact metric spaces we have the existence of. Uh, and for compact metric spaces, we have existence of geodesics. We prove this for metric spaces. Two, if we have that M is boundedly compact, then M is a geodesic space. And again, we, we discuss this for the general setting of length spaces. Three, if there exists some radius epsilon such that all balls with that radius, say closed ball, are compact, then again, M is geodesic space. Four, 
if M is I'd write, uh, isometrically homogeneous, I will, I will remember, remind you what it is, but homogeneity in the, in the metric sense. So for example, whenever we're going to have a group equipped with, uh, with a distance that is invariant under the group structure, then we're going to have an isometrically homogeneous uh, metric space. Then M is a geodesic space. Okay. Now, wh what does isometrical homogeneous means? Means that for any two points, P and Q in, in M, there exists F from M to M, distance preserving, preserving, homomorphism, which are also called isometries, such that f of p is equal to q. Okay, now this, this theorem is, is um, the, the, all, all four parts of this theorem are very simple. But let's, let me say, say still something. So the theorem is an immediate consequence consequence of, so first of all, we have Chaurachewski theorem, then being a length space, and fund just general theory of length spaces. So, Chorachevsky theorem tells us that M, any CC space, is locally compact. Hmm. Now, we have that this a length space, and therefore the CC distance, and in particular, we prove that the Finsler distance is a, is a, is a, uh, uh, the, the two notions of, of length is the same, right? So we are in the presence of uh, uh, of a length space, of a locally compact length space. So, and there are several theorems for length spaces, and and in particular, we have so two general facts. So, if all um, epsilon balls Epsilon close balls, uh, and balls of radius of radius epsilon are compact. Then um, the metric space um, is uh, then okay. Let me say, and 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 you are in a geodesic space. Then all balls are compact or closed balls. Okay? Uh, let, let me stress this in, in a geodesic space. In, in a, so no, it's an, in a length space. Mm -hmm. This is the first fact. I'm going to discuss a little bit. And then, of course, as soon as you, and then if you have an asymmetrically homogeneous uh, uh, space, still length space, and is that is locally compact, then it's going to be boundedly compact. So all, all closed balls are compact. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me let me discuss a little bit why um, having just some ball, then you get all balls are compact. Okay, um, I hope that this that the rest of the theorem is true because you know as soon as we have one ball, 
then you have all balls, then, then you, you really have a compact, abundantly compact length space. And we proved this in the, when we we're discussing some preliminaries of, in, of geodesic, of metric spaces, that this implies existence of geodesics, okay? And we will prove that isometric homogeneity means in particular that, and locally compact, we will prove that some ball is compact and therefore space is bandedly compact and therefore geodesic, okay? So now let's clarify why one ball, comp one, the ball of one size are compact implies that all balls are compact, okay? Let me do this as an exercise and I will just give some uh, precise numbers to, just to to be concrete and not uh, not have too many symbols. So let's say that we have a space um, where the balls, the closed balls of radius two are compact for all points in the space X. Hmm? In the space X. Hmm? Then I want to say that the balls of radius three are compact. Okay, of course, and then you can, rest, uh, when, once you have understood this exercise, you can replace two and three with uh, epsilon and and some other number greater than epsilon, and you iterate and you will get all possible points, okay? Now, how do you do it? Okay, let's prove that this set is, sorry, sorry P, and this is again for all P in X. Okay, take, Pn, so take, take P in X and take Pn in the closed ball at P, okay? We have to prove that, um, so that they, this sequence converge. So let's, we are in a geodesic space. So take gamma N from P to Pn of length, okay, I cannot take epsilon uh, a three because it's, it may not be realized, but of course I can less find them of length less than four, okay? So let's say that, so we have curves and a parameterized by arc length. So to be one Lipschitz. Hmm. Okay, from P to Pn. Now, what happened if I restrict uh, gamma to the interval zero two. Okay. Now these curves are contained, or actually the image is contained in the ball of radius two, uh -huh, which is compact. Okay. And therefore I can apply Ascoli-Arzela. Tells me that gamma n restricted to zero two convert to some gamma infinity, a curve defined on zero two. Hmm? Now, let's look at what happens at the final point of these points, okay? So I call Q to be the point gamma infinity of two. Hmm? Then for n large, gamma n restricted now to one three, this is inside the ball at Q radius two, close ball, right? Because, um, so what's the picture? Pictures, okay. We have these curves starting at P. They converge at the end at the point Q. Now I look at the curve from one to two, well, one to three, and then they cannot be, um, so they're almost, say, as soon as the, the final point at distance one from Q, then the rest of the curve is at most distance two from Q. So we have this property here, okay? And now again, this is compact. Hmm. And therefore, um, gamma n restricted to one three convert to a curve, we call it gamma infinity restricted to 
one, three. Similarly, then I take the final point. Uh, 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 now, if, if I take two, four, this is contained in B, um, gamma infinity three, two, which is compact, and there four gamma n restricted to, actually the whole interval then, convert to gamma infinity two, four, okay? But hence, Pn, which is nothing else than gamma n of four, converges to gamma infinity of four. So we prove the compactness of the ball of radius three. Okay, now let me say some concluding remarks about metric space with that are isometrically homogeneous. So if X is isometrically homogeneous, and locally compact, then, okay, fix P in X, take epsilon such that B P epsilon is compact. Hmm? Then for any other Q in X, there exists an isometry isometry with f of p is equal to q. But then the ball, the closed ball with radius epsilon, this is exactly since we have the isometry is f of p q epsilon have f is a homomorphism so this is also compact so we prove that all balls are compact right so all balls all balls of radius epsilon are compact so we have proved that if you have an isometrical homogeneous um, locally compact space, for example, a sub uh, uh, Carnot Carateodri space, then all balls are, are compact, namely, it's boundedly compact. And therefore, from the general theory of uh, metric spaces, we have existence of length minimizing curves. If you like the video, you can let me know by clicking the like button. This will also suggest the course to other people. If you want to see more videos on Sabriman and Geometry, please subscribe to the channel, clicking below. Bye.